free for the conduction it will be easily giving the current in the outer circuit <coughs> now in the valence band the semiconductors they have a sufficiently large gap the energy gap is less than 2 ev but at the room temperature actually there uh, as the temperature increases the resistance decreases so it has a negative temperature coefficient and it can move to the higher uh, level with a sufficiently uh, given energy whereas you can see in the insulators the energy band gap is greater than 3 ev it can reach up to 10 electron volt so uh, it will require the insulators they will require a very large amount of energy for, for the electrons to move from valence band to conduction band and for conduction now why semiconductor is very much important because uh, nowadays whenever we find out uh, any mobile or any computer chip or anything uh, electronically device we we find out a very small chip inside that even uh, one can use the ic integrated circuit inside that so those integrated circuits they are made up of semiconductors so a semiconductor is considered to be a very important very significant in nowadays uh, Uh, in the electronics so one should study it very rigorously it is considered to be pure when there is no loss of impurity atom in a billion host atoms so it is uh, the well known examples are silicon and germanium they are called intrinsic semiconductors so semiconductors can be classified as two in two parts first is intrinsic another is extrinsic where uh, the conduction arises due to the thermally excited electrons and holes the process of in, uh, intentional addition of controlled amount of impurity to an extrinsic semiconductor is known as doping when you add any external impurity inside the the uh, intrinsic semiconductor deliberately it is called doping a semiconductor doped with the impurity atoms is called an extrinsic semiconductor now one can see here the well known example is of silicon one can see that the outermost electro outermost orbital of the silicon has four valence electrons and here on the left hand side diagram one can see that there is a pentavalent impurity added inside uh, uh, the particular silicon lattice why why should we know the band theory of semiconductors because here in the band theory we know we consider the lattice or crystal structure of the uh, conductor or semiconductor or the specimen here in the in the left hand side diagram one can see that there is a hole actually one can see here uh, for the first atom in the left hand side diagram the uh each of the atom is connected with the four bands with another four uh, atoms another four nuclei in the lattice but here in the uh, th second of the second column there is a hole because there is an impurity added why because if we add the impurity say the trivalent impurity the fourth atom of the silicon will be uh, will uh, will be uh, waiting for the electron to be for the covalent bond and that's why the the there will be a gap at at a particular place which has same mass as the electron but it it has it has a positive charge so hole that is known as hole and hole are the majority charge carriers in p type semiconductor on the left hand side one can see the n type semiconducting material in which pentavalent impurity is added so whenever the pentavalent impurity is added say phosphorus there will be one electron which is waiting for the covalent bond formation and that's why there will be a uh, there will be a free electron for conduction so one can see that in p type semiconductor holes will be the uh, the majority charge carriers while the electrons will be the mi minority charge carriers why electrons because there are some uh, thermally generated electrons due to some thermal vibrations but there is a very less probability of having minority charge carriers as electrons in p type material and uh, the similarly in the n type material there is a less probability of having holes as a minority charge carrier but due to thermally generated uh, there will be due to thermal generation there will be a small amount of holes inside the semiconducting material now uh, how can we define the energy band gap of p type and n type material one can see here that in the valence band 
from the valence band there is a transition to the conduction band by uh, says in the silicon atom but whenever a donor impurity is added there will be a uh, downward transition or say downward level shift of the conduction level and it is actually the that shift is actually of 0.05 electron volt in the in the acceptor level the valence band rises up to a high level again it may be it, it is of the order of 0.05 electron volt so here is the band formation of uh, say pn junction diode now one can see the real picture of the doping of silicon semiconductor later is here one can see that in the left hand side silicon atoms are there as blue on the right hand side uh, there are there is an n type material on the uh, left hand side it is a p type material on the left hand side group 3 element doping is there that means trivalent impurity is added there and on the nth and the right hand side pentavalent impurity is added there and in the in between the two regions there is a pn junction means p type material and n type material are joined together and here one can see that there is a uh, uh, you can say the recombination of electron hole pairs now how a pn junction formation occurs actually fabrication is very complicated it is not that we are just adding a, we are just joining the p type material to the n type material during the process of growth generally it is a thin film growth during the process of the thin film uh, growth this type of uh, pn junction is occurred and one can see here that uh, whenever we apply uh, initially we don't apply any biasing but whenever uh, the pn junction is formed the majority charge carriers from both the sides they come nearer to each other and uh, there will be a depletion zone which is created and one can see that uh, in the depletion region there is a electron hole recombination occurs actually you can see here in the real time uh, scenario that applying the opposite polarity voltage reduces the barrier that is the uh, potential barrier and it allows some charges to go across the junction and you will get a higher amount of current across the junction but as in the reverse bias one can see that uh, when when we apply the reverse bias reverse bias means p to n n to p means external battery is joined to the p type material and uh, external battery negative is joined to the n type material whenever this type of uh, connection is made there is merely a small amount of current in the external uh, circuit why because the external voltage supplied it increases the width of the barrier the barrier is formed at the junction and that is called the junction barrier that potential is known as the barrier potential so due to this the charge flow is blocked and in the outer circuit one get a very small amount of current but when we apply when we increase increase and increase the external field in the reverse bias then we get a sudden breakdown and then the diode cannot be used actually at that time covalence bonds are ruptured and uh, there will be a large amount of current which flows in the external circuit and at that point the the current does not depend upon the external voltage it is again it is only due to the electrons which are free for conduction now one can see here the practical circuit of the diode we can see that there is a pn junction diode this is actually the symbol of the pn junction diode it is joined with a resistance one can also measure the uh, voltage across the resistance but this resistance is joined to a variable source variable source means uh, one can change the power supply according to the will and wish of the user and now we can also measure the vd that is diode voltage across the diode also if you want to measure the diode current then we can join the uh, emitter in between voltage in between the source power supply and the diode and also here on the right hand side there is a characteristics of the vi characteristics of a diode of a simple diode in uh, in the graph right but before we form the graph we should uh, really perform the experiment and we should find out how the things are going on in the real uh, in the real time laboratory now i'll show you the experiment to form to find out the pn junction 
vi characteristics of the pn junction one can see here it is the breadboard the breadboard is actually the uh, device on which one can taste the components and one can form the temporary circuits here is a simple breadboard which you can find out in the market the uh, the principle of the breadboard says that yeah that view is better the principle of the breadboard says that it is there are actually n number of pores inside the uh, board and now one can see here that there are four panels first one is a thinner panel and another two another two are broader and again there is a thinner panel actually one can see that each of the pore is acting like an individual terminal uh you have you must have seen in your pcb printed circuit board in your 11 12th that there are uh, different terminals and one can see here that each of the pore here is acting like a termin acting like a terminal but there are n number of pores it is look it looks just like your braid so that's why this is called the braid board here in one line there are uh, n number of terminals say actually there are group of 5 5 terminals each of the terminal is connected in series in row it is not connected internally with the second row but both the rows they are connected in series with each other now in on your broader panel each of the column has the same scenario you have five uh, line in one column they are connected in series with each other the same way for all the columns there is no connection between two adjacent columns here but one can see if if i join if i give a power supply of uh, say 5 volt in my first and fifth column then it will be one and the same for the pair of second third fourth and fifth uh, pair of this of those particular two columns right now if i have here we will be joining only one loop circuit but if i have a 10 loop circuit then what will i do i'll give a power supply to first and second row of the thinner panel as positive and negative and and thereafter for each of the loop if I, whenever i require the power supply i take the supply from here now one can have a question that in this type of smaller uh, terminals which type of wires are used you may have used uh, your simple wires but you if you have seen in your simple wires there are six or seven smaller uh, wires but here there are a simple type of wire which are called the single cut wire and one can see here that there is only one wire inside this right so one can have the connection using this wire this is called single cut wire inside the breadboard easily right so now we will join the circuit uh, using uh, the thinner diode or resistance and actually I, I don't have a variable power supply I am having a continuous power supply constant power supply now this is actually the a real pn junction diode it is a uh, say uh, a wire on which the pn junction film is wound and on which the insulation is wound on one side of it there is a silver line and that silver line shows the cathode of the pn junction diode that is that silver line shows the n type material of the pn junction diode and on the resistance board uh, we can have there are you must be aware of the carbon resistor bb roy goes to bombay via gateway you must be aware of this uh, that equation and one can have the color code you can find out the yeah that that's that will give the better view yeah that shows the color code actually and with the color code you can find out the tolerance as well as the value of the conductor value of the resistor say and now again i'm showing the pn junction diode here in order to have a closer look you can see that on one side there is a silver line say on my right hand side i can see that there is a silver line and that is actually the cathode of the pn junction diode and now we will join the circuit here using the multimeter what is a multimeter you may have used uh, this type of dmm this dmm it shows uh, it can measure the multiple quantities uh, it it may it can measure uh, vdc vac adc aac 
also it can measure resistance and in the laboratory we will use the we use generally use the uh, DMM with our normal AC power supply this is actually a very handy DMM and using this we can uh, join the circuit now how can we join the circuit here say uh, we will mount the diode of course this is called the mounting of the PN junction diode mounting of the elements or say devices on the breadboard one can mount the diode on the breadboard and and as I know as as uh, we have seen in the circuit what we will do we will join the resistance with the n type material in series with pn junction diodes and one can see here that I have joined the resistance in a particular column of the n so it is in series with the pn junction diode now I will supply the battery the power supply to the pn junction diode actually pn junction diode positive we are joining initially joining the forward bias condition for the pn junction diode and we can join it with respect to the resistance so actually this is the first loop of the circuit so as you have seen i i am joining it with uh, very very much care so that one can have a better idea now we can measure i'm just showing you a schematic idea one can adjust uh, the voltmeter into a voltage range desired voltage range and one can find out the values here right one can see the voltage values in between the two ends of the diode actually also we can uh, join the single cut wires with our normal simple uh, dmm which is found in our laboratory but with handy one there is a conveniency that we can just touch the diode and we can find out the voltage okay we can also find out the voltage vr that is the resistance